And obviously, okay. <laughs> I think it just crashed. Hey guys, this is Penguin here, and uh, we're gonna do some stuff with this Raspberry Pi I got here. Uh, I kind of had this idea, actually walk after watching a Crazy Ken episode, uh, I was like, you know what, let's have some fun with the Raspberry Pi, and in his video, he was using Amibian to run a Amiga emulator on the Raspberry Pi. What we're going to be doing today is actually be running Windows 95 on this Raspberry Pi. So I already have Raspbian set up here, just Raspbian Lite, and I've already installed QEMU, and I've already got Q QEMU working without X, so it's actually working directly on the frame buffer. And I already downloaded Windows 95. And after all that, I was like, you know what? This might make a little interesting video. So let's, let's record it and see what happens. Uh, so I'm currently downloading the second of the two things we need, uh, which is the Windows boot disk, since Windows 95 can't boot straight from ISO, you need a floppy disk. So I've actually just been using Lynx uh, since I'm, I am I don't have a USB within arm's reach, and uh, it's a pretty good web browser in the terminal, and uh, you know, I downloaded, uh, downloaded Windows 95 from it, no problem. Uh, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see where this goes. All right, so I just typed in the URL here, and links uh, does a couple things before it actually loads the web page. First, it asks you to allow cookies, so we're just gonna we're just gonna say yes. Although I don't think it's particularly necessary. And uh, there you go. That's links. Uh, it's a little small because obviously we are on a 1080p monitor here, uh, but you can just see arrow keys and go all the way down. So this is the win. This is actually the same page that's right here on my computer. And there should only be one download link, which is all the way down here. So we can go there, press enter. I really should get a stand if I if I should if I'm gonna do more tech videos like this. Holding it is probably both very annoying for you and for me. And uh, as you can see, I've already used uh, three of my 25 downloads. In any case, we can go all the way down to the one mirror available for this image, and uh, you can see what it's doing down here. It's asking us, do we want to download it? Yes, we'll press D. And that will download our boot disk. That was pretty quick, and we get a little prompt all the way up the top corner here. Uh, if we want to save to disk. Now, one thing I did by accident was I didn't realize that this, is, this save to disk was not actually selected by default. Uh, this help is actually what's selected by default here. So make sure you hit the down arrow and make sure it's yellow. Let's do that all the way down here. You see just a file name. So it only seems to get like the first word, like the file name is like Microsoft Windows 95, yada, yada, yada. It only gets the first one, we're just gonna name it Microsoft Boot, and it's a seven zip file. So we'll give it the extension, and that should save it. And we can just, I have control C, out of links, press LS. We now have our two files, our Windows 95 ISO, that's a OSR 2.5 OEM ISO in that seven zip file. And we have this, Boot seconds at file. Just googling an issue because, well, not an issue. I just uh, don't actually know the command to ex extract seven zip files from the terminal. Apparently, we need p seven zip full. So I'll install that. We'll see if we can extract our files. Okay, so I thought the uh, the handheld camera might get a little annoying uh, for both you and me. So I took. Uh, I don't actually have it stand. I'm using my phone for this. Uh, but I have this little 10-pack of DVD RWs uh, with a couple DVDs taken out, and that slot between the DVDs and the cardboard was just enough to kind of balance my phone. Uh, it's probably going to fall, and I'm definitely going to have to take it out. And I, Let me see if I can just kind of turn it here without so I can get more of the screen. I, I would angle it, but it's, like, probably going to fall if I do so, so... Yeah, that's that's about as good as we can get, but you can look at the prompt, and uh, I can't type anymore. Oh, okay, that was weird. Oh, you know, I was going to hit clear, but I realized that would have uh, that would have put the text up, and you wouldn't have been able to see it. So, anyway, we installed P7zip, 
And uh, according to Google here, askubuntu.com, uh, 7, 7ZEA, X, and then our file name. So we'll do the micro, we'll do the ISO first. And that is going to extract. As I was saying, my uh, tripod solution uh, isn't that good. I mean, these are these are nice these are nice DVDs. Uh, well, kind of. They got them from the dollar store. I think they're like four dollars. But I hit the record button and the phone fell out. So there's that. I guess we can. I'll put it back here. I also realized that the um, this this is only a temporary solution because once we have QEMU, we're gonna have to see the whole screen. So I'm gonna have to figure something out. I think we're good. All right. Everything is okay. And uh, camera focuses. Let's extract the other thing. I predict the uh, the boot file is not going to be. Yeah, <laughs> it's very small. It's a floppy disk. It's like what four megs or something. Uh, so we should have now. Yes, our two folders. Our Windows ninety five C. This is our OSR two English ISO. And off the screen, can't see it. All right, cool. Is the boot disk, which apparently is a Dell OEM. So, we'll see. I think that should be fine. It's just DOS anyway, just to launch the setup. Uh, Alright. Let's create, let's create a disk image. So, QEMU. I guess we can just use, like, QCAL. That's fine. Uh, QCAL2. Uh, we'll call this win95.qcal2. And, um, Windows 9... Well, this is... I was about to say... Windows 95 probably can't handle that larger disk size. I only have an 8GB SD card in here anyway, so we'll just give it like, uh, actually, you know, uh, let's see, how much, yeah, H. how much space do we have left? We have 4.6 gigabytes available, so I guess we just give it 4 gigs, yeah, seems about right. I don't plan on doing anything else, like this will boot straight to Windows 95. So, 4 gigs. Ah, uh, why can dash f q oh create my bad, and there we go. We have our disk image, which you can't see, but it's there. Here, oh no, there we go. Win ninety five dot q cow two. Let's do this. So, uh, nice little thing I found online. I don't know if I have it open anymore. Uh, I don't have the tab open. Okay, let's just hope. Let's hope history can save us here. Uh, right up here, you can't see it. That's fine. I'll type it out. There's a nice. So here's the thing: if you run QEMU system i3 i386, it's going to complain that there are no available video drivers because we're not in X. But you can actually tell SDL, which is the GUI of QEMU. To actually use the frame buffer instead, which is perfect for us, because we don't even want X. Because that's way too much overhead. It tells use FBCon. Uh huh. So set this environment variable. And then if we launch QEMU. And if I take my camera here. There you go. Look at that. Nice and full screen. Not scaled or anything, but that is QEMU. So put the camera back down here. Oh, okay. I apologize if anyone is getting motion sickness from this. I promise, if we do this again, I'll get something better. I don't actually don't... words. I don't know how to actually exit this, so we can just, uh, on this uh, TTY here, I have HTOP. So, oops, that's the camera. Gonna have to wipe that. We have HTOP. I can just find... Uh, QEMU, which is right here, press F9, and kill it. That works pretty well, and there you go. Interestingly, it actually sends us back to this TTY, so I guess it just kind of knows. Yeah. Alright. So now it's time to construct our... Oh gosh, you can see the... I... Yeah, you know what? I realize the camera is very close to the 
cardboard. <laughs> anyway, it's time to construct our command. So I have the QEMU.org wiki. We can uh, start typing in our command. So slash net dev user. I realize actually, uh, that's fine. You know what? I was going to say I should just put this in a file right now, but we might have to modify this. So uh, just won't be easy to copy and paste. NE. Okay, so this is our say, this is our network adapter. So we will be connecting to the internet. Whether that's a good idea, I have no idea. I mean, presumably, any sort of major Windows 95 internet threats have kind of gone. Let me turn turn this. There we go. Uh, so presumably, connecting to the internet is not that bad of an idea. Two dash sound hardware. We'll see. This hopefully will work. We'll get some. Sound Blaster 16. Uh, dash 64 megs, no problem. So we're gonna emulate a Pentium, original Pentium CPU. Cirrus. That's just, I think that's just a basic, basic graphics card. Turn that even more. You can barely see that. I. <laughs> uh, dash local time gets that synced up with the hardware clock. Although we don't actually have a hardware clock on the Pi. I think the Pi should have. Use uh, NTP. And get the current time. Uh, FDA. So this is going to be our Microsoft. One or the other. Uh, so, uh, oh, that's right. This is. I forgot to set our locale, so I have, I have to kind of guess here. This is on a UK keyboard layout. Which one is our slash? No, those are numbers. Uh, something. One of these should be slash. Come on. That's the other slash. Where's our forward slash? Or backslash, you know what I mean. Huh. Okay, you know what? Uh, let's actually just fix that. Just uh, look back over here. Also, I can totally see the uh, really cool, like, I don't know if that's like optical or digital uh, video stabilization going on. One thing I noticed with the Pixel camera is that the normal camera, like photo camera, super wide lens like you would be able to see a lot more of the screen just from where the phone is sitting just to, you know, I don't know, a foot away from the uh, monitor but in video mode it's like super zoomed in so I need to pseudo that and the best you're gonna get <laughs> is the bottom of the the screen oh well I'm sorry I uh, will go to I think localization options Change keyboard layout. Yes, this is exactly what we need. And we just need a generic PC, not UK, other, English, US. And just standard US, the default for the keyboard, no compose key, yada yada yada. And there we go. And that should be everything we need. We finish. Now, aha, there we go. Yoink. I'm gonna break my phone. <laughs> Hold on, I'm just gonna like wipe the camera because it's it's uh, seems a little dirty. All right, we're back. I also flipped my phone over so the the camera is a little bit higher so you can see see a little more of the screen. Let me just uh, there we go, awesome. Also, change the color balance. All right, cool. So. Uh, I keep instinctively wanting to clear because, you know, I don't know, an OCD thing, but then you won't be able to see anything. Right, let's go back to our, our command here. Just, there we go. Actually, that's going to wrap around eventually, but now we can. There we go, Windows 95. And we want. Which, what do we want here? We want the OS. Okay. OS2 boot disk, yep. And, if we. See right here we have disk one.imc. That is gonna be our floppy disk. Huh. And then next thing, our CD ROM. It's actually an installer. Uh, Microsoft Windows 95. Oh, that's no C. That's the other folder. Uh huh. And inside this folder we have our ISO. Windows 95 OSR2 to ISO. Dash boot A because we want to boot. We can't see that. Boot A because we want to boot from the uh, floppy disk. 
lost on another sound hardware. I think we could probably do that on one thing, but PC speaker. I also have no speakers actually plugged into the Pi, but, uh, you know. Hit enter. And here we go. Starting Windows 95. Oh, yes. I want to load CD-ROM support. Oh, it, okay, it picked for us. I uh, don't know which one of these. Now, presumably, this is a fairly, I guess, recent Windows 95 uh, ISO or floppy disk image because I thought DVD in there. So anyway, there we go. Uh, I don't know if it got our um, got our thing here. So this is if we do a not an LS. Oh my God! I'm pressing enter. And, and enter is just typing. Right, okay, so first prop backspace is S. Oh no, 5. Oh man, R, okay. Okay. D is O. F is P. <laughs> G is <laughs> square bracket. Oh man, the, it's like the. Okay. You know, it's like the, it's like the keyboard has been, has been shifted over. Because, like. What is it? Yeah, J is enter, which is here, and then H is is this is is this key. So it's kind of like they kind of got shoved over. Huh? What arrow keys? What do they do? Oh, arrow. This is also enter apparently. Can we, can we type a command? Is that? Where's D? Which one's D? Oh no, it's not happening. <laughs> Caps lock is M. Shift is G. Yeah, there's Q, Q, and this kind of these keys up here. These are these are numbers apparently, and the actual numbers don't do anything. Oh no no no, that's slash, but like an enter. Huh. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to set a keyboard layout or something. Come on, SDL, why? Awesome, so crisis averted. We can now type, uh, we can type things correctly. Uh, just a quick look at the man pages reveals that we had to. I, I guess we had to do the dash K option for some reason. Uh, yeah, this option is only needed when it's not easy to get raw PC key codes. So I, I'm assuming the lack of X11. Uh, and, uh, you know, something about your Macs and X servers or VNC. So, presumably, in some weird instances, we have to explicitly tell uh, QEMU kind of what to expect. So, it says the default is in US, but uh, well, I guess that's if I don't put, if I just run this. Anyway, I just did dash K in US, and uh, this works. I can, I can press enter, I can press DIR, and we get the directory listing. So, what we've got to do now is D colon. And that should oh, okay. <laughs> Next problem, we gotta figure out what our drive is on. Is it on C colon? Okay, hello. Maybe it's this. Or that actually might be our. That actually might be the um, the drive. That's not gonna. How do I? It's not Control C on DOS. Uh, it's it's just gonna hang. All right, cool. I might have to format C before doing that. Although it should it should say, you know. Oh, okay. Hello. Uh, volume in C. So I guess it is Control C, huh? Did there? Oh, okay. Yeah. So C for some reason uh, is our DVD drive, which yeah is probably gonna cause problems, but we can probably deal with that. Then what's our What's our actual? It's not like LSBLK. That's not a thing in DOS. How do I F disk? Oh no no no! Oh, you can't go up. Okay, cool. F disk. Uh, large disk support. Uh, yeah, it's probably fine. This fixed disk one. Uh, sure. Can I display partition information? That might be what I want to see. No partition. Okay. Escape that. Uh, let's create a DOS partition, I guess. Create a primary DOS partition. It's a verifying drive integrity. Okay, cool. 
it might just be assigned to C once we actually use F disc on it, so. Uh, do you wish these? Also, this is really reflecty. I will point that out. Let me, like, can I turn the down, down there? we go. Look at that. That's much better. Oh, that's so much nicer. Okay, cool. For some reason, uh, the pixel really wanted to make things bright and super reflective, but that looks... I can even bring that down even more. Oh, man. That's so much better. There we go. I mean, yeah, even the rest of the room is fine. Yeah, it's cool. Just lock the brightness all the way there. Do I want to... Use the maximum available size. Yes, that'd be nice. Verify the drive, and drive integrity, because old hard drives can die at any time. Shut down Windows before you okay. Restart, no problem. How do we reboot? Reboot, is that it? Is it? Oh. Reboot. Nope. Shut down. Nope. Okay, uh, exit. Nope. All right. Uh, I don't want to shut this down. I think. I mean, it's DOS. You probably just have to like turn the computer off, and I have to kind of one hand switch the TTY. That was quite a nice finger stretch. All right. We'll go right back up. Starting Windows 95. Uh, I guess this is yeah the first CD-ROM driver appears to be fine. Let that do its thing. little blinking cursor. And here we are. So, okay, this time, this time we have a D drive, so presumably then we have a C drive, I guess. Here, let's check D colon. Do a dir on this one. Let it, uh, let it load or whatever. The pie is also quite, quite warm, so... I really should get one of the little fans for it. I'm sure that would be very useful. Oops, got in the, got in the way of the camera there. And I also should definitely invest in a uh, tripod or, or whatever it is. So there we are, D colon slash, that's our thing. So presumably then C, C colon is not formatted. Yes, so it's not a port. Let's go back to let's go back to uh, a. All right, and we'll, we'll format. Oh, format. C colon. Is that all I need to do? Parameter format C colon. Uh, okay. How do I format command? Tell me. Not gonna tell me. Uh, format dash h. All right, cool. Let me Google the syntax for the format command. All right, I'll stupid. Uh, if you zoom right into that, that's. That's format C semicolon. Uh, it just needs to be format C colon, and then proceed. Yes. I also realized the QEMU wiki page has some pretty de detailed on how to actually do that. So that's very nice. We are currently at uh, this step right here, format C. So that's gonna go and do a format FAT32, presumably. Uh, or FAT16, I don't know what. It might be FAT16, because it's DOS. Okay, writing our file allocation table, so it is some variant of FAT. Calculate free space, this may take seven minutes. I mean, it's, it's a four gig drive, that's pretty, that's pretty expansive. Just out of curiosity, what would... I hit the stop button, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, out of curiosity, ooh, that did not mean to click that. I'm not that great at making videos. Out of curiosity, uh, also you, wow, uh, this brightness thing, I really should just let it do it auto, there we go. Not this, uh, what is the minimum requirements for, maybe the recommended requirements for Windows 95, presumably very, a lot, uh, lower than that. Minimum requirements. Also, kind of thing, interesting thing I noticed, I, I tapped to focus, and it actually like follows like I'm I focused on forty megabytes, okay sure. But it actually follow you can't see this, but it's also oh hello. Okay, what was I saying here? System requirements. Three to six DX or better. Four megabytes memory. We give it sixty four. Eight megabytes recommended. Hard disk thirty five to forty megabytes to upgrade. And clean fifty to fifty five. Huh. So, so I guess it, it needs more for a clean install than 
stuff. Or is that like maybe it's just 35 more additional from Windows 3.1? Give it a volume label. Oh, that's a that's a tough one right there. Pi ninety five. Cool. And there we go. We have a C drive. And if we go to C, C colon, there should be nothing in here. Exactly. All right. Cool. So let's go to our D drive now. Ooh, hello. And let's run everyone's favorite setup. And the I know this. Do you know this? Skip scan disk. Alright. Uh, it shouldn't do this. Alright. Well, I lied. Okay, it's gonna do scan disk anyway. Uh, oh, there's some weird video artifacting on the camera here. That, oh, there we go. Just turn the brightness all the way down. There was, I don't know, you guys probably saw there was a weird like halo around the thing. I guess the skip scan disk thing must have been either I did it wrong or it, it only existed in like Windows. I know I know there is something like that. It might not exist in Windows ninety five though. Thankfully, it's it's not. It's going pretty fast. I mean, we're on a we're on a we're on solid state technology. I mean, it's an SD card, so uh, you know, eight gig random sand disk I had laying around could die in like two minutes. I have no idea. Although, yeah, presumably the scan disk is not going to be that useful, but, you know, we'll let it complete. Oh, check this out, guys. We're in setup. It's, uh, preparing. I don't know. I think it's copying some stuff, probably. Not, uh, very well versed in the Windows 95, uh, setup. But, that is pretty cool. Running on this Raspberry Pi. Now, I don't know what the speed's going to be like. It's a Raspberry Pi 3, so, you know, it's, it's pretty fast. And uh, the requirements for Windows 95 is pretty low, so, you know, I'm hoping we're emulating, you know, at least something like a 486. I mean, the original Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 1, which I have somewhere, I don't know where, that apparently has, I mean, single-core CPU, so it's like, what, a, a Pentium, Pentium 3, I believe, is the speed. I think, the, okay. Right, okay. <laughs> so clearly, yes, we did do something wrong with the, with my little trick. Just out of curiosity, we have this mouse, but if you click in here, aha, look at that. Mouse drivers. All right, cool. So I guess we're going to have to go back. Yep. Let's just do setup. We'll let it do its scan disk. Fine. I might have just done the wrong backslash. I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, as I was saying, what was I saying? Oh, yes, the original Pentium... No, the original Raspberry Pi is about equivalent to a Pentium 3, which is with better graphics. Because, you know, it had a... Not a great GPU, but it, it had something. Uh, better than, I guess, what would be available during the era of the Pentium 3. But, I mean, yeah, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 is significantly faster. I mean, for one, it's four cores, so, like... You know, right off the bat. I don't know... I mean, we are only emulating one core, and Windows 95 will only use one core. So I don't know if having additional cores really helps QEMU that much. Uh, though it, it might use more than one core, like, for emulation. Not entirely sure. We can Google that. Uh, yeah, but it's it's also a much faster ARM core. It's, you know, it's 64-bit, it's, it's a newer architecture, and it's running at a higher clock speed, so... Um, and, you know, I mean, a, I'm sure a Pentium 3 can emulate Windows 95. Uh fairly well. I mean, the, obviously this is running in software emulation. Not, no hardware acceleration, because it, it's ARM, so... In any case, that is almost done. I'll just uh, pause the video until it's ready. Oh, as an, an, as, as an aside, <laughs> I better cut that out and post. Sometimes I can't speak. The Windows 95 logo is just really awesome. I don't know. All right, and we are back. Welcome to Windows 95 setup. Congratulations on your choice of Windows 95, the newest and easiest way to do what you want with your PC. Setup will take 30 to 60 minutes, so uh, 7.05. Let's see how long it actually takes. All right, Windows is now preparing the setup wizard. All right, so now we have to carefully read all of this EULA. 
which, uh, you know, is probably a lot shorter than, uh, like, licenses of today. Like that, you know, that's kind of a reasonable read. I mean, it's still pretty long, but, you know, this was back before we really had major legal problems with software. Anyway, sure, we accept it. Microsoft, come after me. And welcome to the Windows 95 Setup Wizard. And it's running pretty pretty smooth. I mean, that's, you know, it's not bad. Not bad at all. I mean, we technically, we haven't started Windows 95 yet. We're only the setup. The setup is kind of like a, just like from the UI elements, kind of just looks like a, probably like an embedded Windows 3.1 or something. Install to C colon slash Windows, no problem. And it will do some checking, I guess. Uh, it prepares your Windows directory and verifies your computer has enough disk space. So I guess it's just going to scan the disk now and see if there's like a previous version of Windows, like Windows 3.1 or something. There is nothing there, just an empty drive, so should whiz through that. Now I actually have, I've never installed Windows 95 on real hardware. I've used Windows 95 on real hardware, but that was a long time ago, and you know, I didn't really know what I was doing. I was kind of a kid back then, so. I don't know, it might be fun to do Windows 95 on real hardware and kind of compare the speed. We'll do a, we'll do a typical, or, you know what, we'll do a custom, we're cool. Uh, let's type our, totally, oh, it's, by the way, I'm definitely going to get the product key off WinWorld, because... I mean, but I did at some point in time actually own one of these. I had one of these somewhere. It, I might still have it. So technically this is legal. Anyway, I'll type this in. I'll check, catch you guys in a second. All right, let's type my name. I really should just type all these off camera. Oh, I can't even. All right, there we go. Hit enter. Windows will detect the hardware devices on your computer. You can have setup look for all hardware devices, or you can specify which devices you want setup to search for while it's analyzing your computer. Do you want setup to look for all hardware devices? Yeah, sure. I hope it doesn't crash. Uh, these old uh, Windows, just old Windows can be very unstable. Uh, my favorite is that, I think that Windows 98 demo where they, they plugged in the scanner, you know, Bill Gates and the other guy, and then and it was screened. Anyway. Let's see here. Uh, we have both of these. We have a network adapter and we have sound. Oh, yes. We're going to get on the internet. I mean, right here. <laughs> this may take several minutes, but there's no disk activity for a long time. Turn off your computer. No, turn your computer off. Do not press Control or Delete. Then turn it back on. Run setup. And choose safety re safe recovery when prompted. Yeah, so even, even back then, Microsoft knew that this is kind of the sketchiest part of the setup because it... Uh, Stuff was a lot less nice back then, just general hardware things. Uh, you know, this has to, like, probe all the, I don't know, ISA slots. And PCI might have maybe existed, I think. I don't really know the timeline of these things, but I definitely know it's not, you know, because you have to set, like, jumpers and stuff on your hard drive. and Things are a lot easier now. So that will hopefully not freeze. Is it frozen? Oh, that might be frozen. Oh, no, never mind. Mouse is fine. We're good, it froze for a second. It, I mean, it's QEMU, like, if of all the kind of hardware things, this should be the most kind of generic PC. So I, I would hope that it, uh, it you know, kind of knows what it's doing. Or at least QEMU knows what it's doing in, you know, in really hardware. But, it, you know, just literally just kind of by random chance it could just crash, so... And to be honest, once we start installing software and, and like, you know, browsing the internet, I would be very surprised if we can get through this without it crashing, or at least something crashing, because this has been... Besides that keyboard failure, this has been a little bit too smooth, and it's concerning me. Uh, we're anyway, we're almost at the end. 97%, 98%. Uh, I also apologize for the... What was it called? The moire pattern, or, or whatever it is. Do I sound stupid? Probably. The... It's a camera, slightly shaky camera pointed at the screen. I mean, this is the best you're going to get. All right, so let's select our components. Uh, accessibility, sure, sure. Do we want Microsoft Fax? Yeah. I don't have a Fax. Oh, and Windows Messaging? Sure. We'll just install everything, which is going to take a whopping 179 megabytes. Oof. I don't know if we have that much space available. 
as as cool as it would be to send and receive faxes, which I you know I've never done in my lifetime. That's something I should probably do at some point. Sounds interesting enough. We're on a Raspberry Pi. I don't think we have a, a fax modem plugged into this thing. Now, if we could go, if we could use dial up on the Raspberry Pi, oh, that'd be that'd be really cool. I'm sure there's something out there, I mean, you know, USB network. Right. Okay. So, network configuration. Do we want we want TCP IP? Is that a thing? No. Okay. Well. Oh. Okay. So this is. Hold on. How does this work? What am I supposed to? What am I supposed to do here? So this is. Lots of file Microsoft using file. Okay. Presumably, I don't have any of these servers. And this is some protocol for network and Windows NT. I think this is what we want. The network adapter is a hardware to a physically connected computer network. Client for Windows logon. Client for Microsoft networks. Ooh. Anyway, did I was didn't I say things were more complicated? I think this is probably properties. Ooh, enhanced 32-bit mode. I mean, Windows 95 definitely has TCP IP support. I'm pretty sure. I really hope so. Okay, I think I think this is what we want. So we'll add that, I guess. Oh no, I think this is. Oh, oh, okay, okay, no, no, no. This is what will be installed. Just out of curiosity, what else do we have available here? We have adapter, detected net devices, existing, and and this too. I guess this is what we have. I'm assuming it already like it auto detected the stuff. So oh, look at all these companies that I don't know exist. Well, for something like Novell. Obviously, until IBM, Kingston. Okay, I'm just gonna assume that this is the network card that we have, uh, and I'm just gonna assume that's the correct option. Uh, all right, cool. What do we call this? We're gonna call this Pi. I'll make that all caps just to kind of follow these old tiny standards. Pi. Oh, that's not caps. Caps lock is caps lock not gonna. All right, so there's no caps lock, I guess. Alright, okay, 595. I might actually make it, um, I might actually make it uppercase for us. Okay, cool, so, this will do the settings, yeah, serious logic, we set that. Standard Microsoft natural keyboard, oh, yes. This is a, this is a random Dell keyboard from, I think, a server. Uh, yeah, keyboard layout, sure, why not, standard PC, unknown monitor, because, uh, yeah, <laughs> no option for Linux frame buffer, sadly. Uh, yeah, standard uh, PS2 mouse. Uh, did it say PS2 keyboard? Probably did too, right? No, just standard keyboard. Alright, cool. Advanced power management. Ooh, yes. User in <laughs> user interface Windows 95. Can I change that? Oh. Huh. So you can... Now that's something we're going to have to explore. That's some You can, huh. Interesting, interesting. Like, I'm assuming that's not gonna like install Windows 3.1, but is that just gonna be like Windows, like a hybrid? Like it's, it's Windows 95 and Windows 95 programs, but then you can. Oh man, I'm really tempted to choose that now. Like they had like a kind of a legacy uh, option, huh? Well, you know what? No, it's 1995, and we're all excited for Windows 95, so. Uh, we're gonna go with the the, the brand new interface, which uh, yeah, st still exists today in Windows 10. Uh, do I want to start this? Ooh, I don't know. I don't think I can spare the one floppy. No, nope, I don't want it. All right, I think we're we're ready to install. Here we go. Ooh, little little drum. Sick beat, bro. Oh, it froze. Oh, it's going. So that now is going to you can exit if you want. Don't want to though. Nice background, by the way. It's in the very nice. We've got a CD-ROM. We got some some Ethernet. I think that's Ethernet. Keyboard. You know, one day, one day we'll we'll get a, a full Windows 95 setup with the with the Microsoft keyboard and mouse and everything. All right. Well, I guess that's just gonna it's gonna prepare. I'll uh, I'll see you guys if anything interesting happens. Welcome to Windows 95. Windows 95 lets you unlock the potential of your PC. What you do now will be easier and faster. What you want to do and more is now possible. Whatever you do will be more fun.
on the Raspberry Pi. Oh man, awesome. So now, ooh, hello. It's easier to use. It's the easiest Windows yet. The new improved interface is simpler and more intuitive to use. I mean, Windows 95 is a pretty awesome Windows release. I mean, really kind of the, the point where Windows uh, was ready. It was like really kind of out there, you know. I think this kind of gray Windows 9X interface was also the the first kind of Windows interface for a lot of people. Uh, no, though not for me. I'm uh, sadly too young to have nostalgic memories of 90s computing. Uh, my first computer was Windows XP, which is would be fun to run on a Raspberry Pi, but also would be a lot slower. Uh, the Raspberry Pi is a lot more uh, suited to running Windows 95. You can click the Start button to quickly open programs, find documents, and use system tools. Use the taskbar to switch between programs as easily as changing channels on your TV. Ah, that makes sense now. I definitely understand. Use long file names to make your files easier to organize and find. Did, I guess, I don't know, I don't know if Windows 3.1 had long file names, but, you know, I think there would probably have been people who were coming straight from DOS, so... Yeah, use the taskbar to switch programs as easily as changing channels on your TV. That is kind of funny, because I feel like now with smart TVs, you would the analogy would kind of probably be the other way around. It'd be like, switch the apps on your TV, like your phone or something. <laughs> Uh, Alright, we'll let it copy files. Get more done! Windows 95 is faster and more efficient. I don't know, is it is it lighter than Windows 3.1? Presumably not, but I guess it's, it's more efficient in, like, using it. Oh man, get excited for that. High-powered performance! And 32-bit networking. Oof, so cool. Oh man, we're going to have so much more fun with Windows 95. And our DOS games too, because that's going to be pretty awesome. Although we might do gaming in another video. I feel like we should do we should do some more software first. I, I want to get on the internet. I think that's that's kind of the goal of today. We'll install like Netscape Navigator and we'll uh, get on the internet. We might even be able to visit one of those, like, because, you know, there's some websites that are still, like, Super 90 style or actually like 90s compatible. We'll see. Do some like what is it? Uh, Ge GeoCities is that what it is? Again, I've, I wasn't around for this, but you know, like I don't know a thing or two. Just plug it in and turn it on. Now this right here, this is some exciting stuff. The Microsoft Network. Ooh. If you ever wondered what MSN stood for, that's exactly what it is. I mean, back in the 90s, there were, they, they, like, MSN was a service provider, so if you had dial-up, you could use MSN. Alright, guys, check this out. Setup is finished. So, it's going to restart our PC. Uh, here's the question of the day. Does um, Windows 95 actually support restarting, or is it just going to tell us to restart? Because we'll find out. Set up the disk and drive. Uh... I don't remember the key combination to get to the QEMU, um, what is it, the QEMU monitor or whatever, to type in a command to eject the, so we're just gonna, just gonna let it restart. And we will see if that, if it boots. Uh, okay, so it's gonna boot from floppy, so what we'll do, because now it, Windows 95 should just be installed on the computer. I don't know if this is one more stage after this, but, uh, there might be. Also, just, you know, look at that 100% CPU. Oh, yeah. The Raspberry Pi is quite warm. So F9. Kill that. And, oh, you know what I realized? We uh, <laughs> didn't actually... Hold on. Oops. Uh, yeah, kill that. Uh, let's actually tell it to boot. We'll leave the floppy in there. Uh, you know, actually, no. We'll get rid of the floppy because we don't need it anymore. Just all the way over here. That's our floppy image. And we'll just... Oh, I'm zooming into the wrong spot. Where's our cursor? I got rid of that. That now. Look at that. Booting from hard disk starting Windows 95. Oh! Dates your configuration file. Huh. 
I'm assuming <laughs> I'm assuming that's supposed to say updates your configuration files, but uh, dating the configuration file works too, I guess. Uh, oh, hello. Oh my God. Rainbow, sort of rainbow. Actually, no, just just blue gradient. Getting ready to run Windows 95 for the first time. And oh, we got blinky cursor, blinky cursor. Come on, home home run. We're just about there. This video is gonna be quite long, jeez. Oh, flicker, cursor, we have a cursor! <sighs> wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. I actually don't know what it's gonna ask, what it's going to ask of us now, but it's doing something. <gasps> oh, that's it, we're done! Network password, uh, d uh, I, do we, did we set? I don't think we enter. Oh, we know, we, what did we? Administrator. Ah, yes, administrator. Uh, uh yeah, this is because we, so this is what that, uh, remember, back when we had the networking configuration, I think if we said win login, it would have just brought us in, but, uh, please confirm the password you enter. This will be used as your Windows password. We're going to give it a very secure password of Raspberry. Uh, no, no, new password, hello. Just bring it up here, raspberry. Hit OK. And, oh, it's setting up our plug and play hardware. Uh, nothing, nothing new has been attached, so I don't know what else it's gonna find and detect here. But we will see. And of course, we're gonna see if we can actually expand it out I don't know how what resolution we go to. I don't know if we're gonna be able to go widescreen, but I hope we can go a little bit bigger than this this little little tiny window here. Again, I don't know how long. Oh, all right, cool. Are we gonna see taskbar? Are we gonna boot? Come on. I believe in you, Windows ninety five. We're also still looking at the setup background, so uh, I guess we are technically still in the background. I realize now, was that, did that prompt ask us to enter, um, I, I realized I didn't read that entirely. Did it actually, I should, I need to look back at the video now. That might have actually asked us for, like, a username and password. Like a new one. <laughs> like that might have been where we're supposed to set it. I just assumed that was a login prompt. Anyway, we are, mouse around, yeah, 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 that's doing something. All right, I'll I'll pause and we'll, we'll come back when it does something interesting. Okay, here we go. Windows ninety five is now setting up the control. Yeah, you know what? It's we're still in <laughs> we're still in setup. That might have been. Oh man, now I'm concerned. If we were supposed to type like two things, we might not be able to log in. Uh, but her password. What is this? Oh, look at all of these shortcuts. Start menu. Yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, we'll see. I should probably go look back at the video. You know what? Bear it back while this does its thing. Uh, we'll, uh, I'm gonna look back at the video and see what actually I did. All right, so I looked back at the footage, and yes, yeah, so I think that was where we're supposed to actually set the like username and password, create a new one. So we put an administrator, and then we kept it blank, but then it still asked us for a password, and, and then we put in a password. So, I mean. We put a username, and I think that's all that matters, so it's either going to have no password, which is fine, or it's going to have a password, which is also fine. In any case, we're now at the time and date prompt, so we'll uh, set our time zone here in Eastern Time. And uh, we'll also see if this has the correct time and date. Now, this is one of the one of the optional things we set up, the Windows messaging for, uh, I guess, an email and stuff, but I guess also faxing, because... This came as part of the Windows fax service. Uh, have I used Windows messaging before? Welcome to the Inbox Setup Wizard. From, from the Inbox, which is part of Windows messaging, you can send and receive electronic mail and faxes. I'm connected to the internet. Uh, have I used it before? No, I have not. Uh, do I want to use Microsoft fax? Yeah, sure. You know what? Cool. It might not actually be happy about this, though, because we have no modem. I'm in... America, sure. I mean, Canada. Here's our Canada option. This is all not useful, but 
you know what? We'll, we'll give it the information here. Where's, where's Canada? Can we just press C? Cambodia, Canada, here we go. What area code am I in? Uh, I'm in the 905. Uh, tone dialing. Cool. Again, not useful because we have uh, no modem. Do you, how? What do you want to use to send or receive faxes? Modem connected to my computer or network fax service? Uh, we'll say uh, modem connected to my computer, which uh, we don't have, so we'll just kind of skip that. Let's see here. You've not selected a fax modem. That's okay, but you'll only be able to work offline. Uh, you no. Know. All right, cool. Offline is good enough. Do we need to really set a phone number? Uh, okay, you know what? Can I just put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Is that good enough? There we go. No problem. We can always change that if we uh, manage to get our hands on a modem, I guess. <laughs> hey, if you, have, if you have a USB modem, you want to send it over, I would be glad to take that. Done! Space! Exclamation mark. <laughs> you are now ready to use Windows messaging with the following services. Microsoft Ask. Oh, okay. Microsoft Fax personal address book, and personal folders. I'll click finish here. And, uh, you can only install one device now. Okay. Install new modem. Why is this still here? I don't want this. Setup has finished configuring your system. You must reset your computer before the new things will take effect. And let's reboot. Also, yes, we did, uh, answer the question. Windows 95 can, in fact, reboot the system here. And, oh, look at that boot up screen. Windows 95 with Microsoft Internet Explorer, because this is the um, this is the OSR 2, which bundles in IE. I think the original version didn't bundle IE, so you get IE, which is pretty exciting. Oh, it flashed something. Got a cursor. Nice cursor on a blank screen. <laughs> and here we are. Okay, let's see if, if it actually set our password. Raspberry. Uh, there we go. That classic. Now, on my phone, the color looks a little bit off. I don't know if I kind of... Well, that's a little closer if I get something white. I don't have paper. Let's see if we can set the white balance. I don't have paper. Oh, what is this? Okay, here's another piece of paper. Oh, that's going to set the white balance, probably, maybe. Yeah, that's closer. All right, cool. I don't know if that changed anything. Color's still off. In any case, Windows 95 is now finalizing settings for your computer. Oh, so exciting. Actually, yeah, this is very exciting. I'm very excited for this. Uh, nice cursor, very smooth. Uh, kind of smooth cursor. Come on. Oh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We did it. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, man still doing something. I don't know if it's going to pop up a window, or, oh, yes, it is. Needs more. God dang it, man. What else do you need? Something about the internet, <laughs> I'm just going to assume. Uh, what does it want from us? Oh, yes, Internet Explorer 4.0. Active setup. Oh, man. It, that doesn't look so good. Uh, is this going to... Oh, okay. Active Channel provides links to various companies and publishers based on your location. We are in... We're in the, the Canada's. Where's Canada? Did I pass Canada? Canada. Oh, it's preparing to install Internet Explorer 4.0. So this is what's, I guess this is new in OSR 2.1 or 2.5. One of them comes with this Internet Explorer 4, which is pretty exciting. Uh, originally didn't come with any, any Internet Explorer. I think it was an optional bundle. And then it came with Internet Explorer 3, and I guess it's done. Oh, no, it's doing an install. And obviously, oh, okay. <laughs> I think it just crashed. <laughs> Remember when I said that we were probably weren't going to get through this without a crash? Is this is this done? Is it broken? I don't know. We'll see. The cur the cursor is like on the other side of the screen now. Like it, it's like it's over. It's, oh, you can't see my hand. Oh, we kind of can. It's over there. Oh, I really hope we didn't break it. Well, it loads. What was I going to say? Oh, yes, Internet Explorer was uh, one of the central pieces of, I think I think one of the central pieces of, like, that Microsoft legal battle of the 90s, you know, with the antitrust and everything, because bundling in Explorer and Netscape wasn't so happy. I mean, it worked. Like, they effectively killed off Netscape, 
you know, into the later parts of the 90s, and by early 2000s, like, Internet Explorer was the browser, IE6. And then, obviously, uh, Netscape kind of made a comeback with Firefox, and that was number one for a while. And then Chrome just destroyed everyone. Oh, it's running scan disk. It's gonna check. I don't know. It. I really hope that was just like a reboot. <laughs> but it sure looked like a crash. Although it wasn't like a, a blue screen or anything. So it, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, that's gonna. I thought Java. Okay. Hello. Microsoft download. That is fix it. Uh. Uh, if you don't want to create an undo disk, skip, I can't skip undo. To create undo disk, insert a... Can I not skip? Skip S. Okay, cool. Fix it. Cool, so, yeah, that was definitely a crash. Man, IE4, come on, guys. Get your head in the game, eh? Like, seriously, come on. Fix the brightness. There we go. No problem. We're back. We're gonna type a password in. So yeah, no more problems with scan disk. So uh, our disk was, was cleaned successfully. But um, we'll see if it comes back to the IE setup. Was also the again the color. You guys notice this, right? Go back to the, the last time we have it back here. Let's get some some white paper in here. No, no, that, I don't know if that actually is. Am I just being stupid? Probably. Oh, it, yeah, I don't know. Whatever. The colors are close enough. In any case, if it comes back to the IE setup, I guess we'll just do it anyway. And then we'll see what happens, because, uh, yeah. Also, I mean, if we actually get, if we actually get the mouse is not moving, did it break? Have we broken Windows ninety five? I'm gonna give it a couple more minutes. If it doesn't come back, then uh, we. Oh no! Never mind. Never mind. Just wait. <laughs> it's doing. It's thinking about it. It doesn't know. The other thing is the Raspberry Pi is really warm. Like I don't. It's probably like throttling. <laughs> Should um. I should put a fan on it. It's already pretty loud in this room. Anyway, we're we're back at a we're back at a kind of laggy desktop. Ooh, that's no good. Um, start. So I guess that probably just gave up with Internet Explorer then. Oh, hello AOL. <laughs> Oof, this is speedy. Let me tell you that. Uh, I don't know if it's trying to do something in the background. Well, you know, let's go up to my computer. What are properties? Let's see what kind of specs this thing is rocking or what it's going to tell. Well, I guess that shouldn't be surprising yet. Pentium, because that's what we told it. C4 makes a RAM. Yeah, look at that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Again? No. Oh, man. Oh, gosh. We might have... Uh... We might have a more interesting issue here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Um. Wow. It yeah. Okay. That's no good. All right. I think it's gonna do scan disk again. Uh, I'll let it do its thing, and we'll come back. Okay. So let me bring out the brightness here. This is a precautionary measure. Can I? Uh, oh no no no. There we go. Just as a, a precautionary measure, I uh, just put this fan here. <laughs> uh. Yeah, that should that should keep the keep the pie nice and uh, nice and cool. We're back here, and we'll see if uh, if anything crashes. Let me you know, turn the brightness all the way down. I realize the color is probably off thanks to the brightness. Again, Pixel Three camera great, but not so great for this kind of thing. Well, boot right back up to Windows ninety five. I should totally overlay the Windows ninety five startup sound here. We'll see. Will I remember it in? In post? The answer is probably not. Uh, to be honest, it'd be a miracle if I even decide to edit this and upload it. <laughs> uh, so while that happens, hopefully, also now that yeah, the pie is is much cooler as expected because it has this giant fan. Uh, we're now 
back at the Windows 95. Bring that brightness up just a little bit. There we go. Uh, so, where were we? Let's <laughs> crash again. So, obviously, there is something... Hor you know what? Okay, hold on. Let's, um, let's, let's shut it off for a second. Let's, let's tell it to leave. Uh, nine. Come on, sig term. Sig kill? Come on, something. Get out of here. There we go. Okay, so I wasn't so happy to exit this time. Not killed. All right. What? What will be crashing it? Uh, so, as per the suggested usage command line, I I think we have that. Like, cause we got rid of. The, oh my god. Uh, those are my arrow keys. Oh crap. That's. Is there something wrong? Is there something wrong with the pie? Well, that's no good. Um, oh, that nine is our enter, sort of. Oh my god. Okay. That's not good. <laughs> you know, remember when I said everything was going too smoothly? Yeah, I completely lied. Things are. Oh my. Is this gonna be a part two kind of video? This might be a part two kind of video. Oh man, alright, well, this is clearly not okay with itself, so let's, uh, let's one hand unplug the pie. <laughs> so you can't even type restart. And, uh, just put the. Oh, sorry. Oh, look, it's my, it's my background. Plug the pie back in. Oh, man. This could even just be like the SD card or something, you know? And, uh, hopefully, we'll get a, get a boot screen here. Yeah, hopefully we'll even be able to, because if this is. We all just assume that Windows 95 is dead, but, oh man. I don't know, because here's the thing. Was the keyboard like that? Would the keyboard have been broken had we normally exit? Because we also, like, kind of uncleanly uh, exited the, uh, the the VM, so. Alright, here we are. Yeah, presumably, okay, everything's cool, so. Go back. Is our command is not here. <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, and also the prompt disappeared. That's fun. Uh, cool. All right. How about two? I guess our history is not saved anymore. That's crap. You know, I realize also we pulled the power. I really hope the changes were synced. Otherwise, we're going to go through this install all over again. So you know what? I think it's time to. It's time to pull out DVD, DVD camera stand. Just kind of plop that in there. So we can stare at this again. We can, so we're now at a terminal. Okay, come on. There we go, good enough. We'll log in as Pi, Raspberry, and I'll just, uh, just bring the prompt down here. Our file's still here. It's not in history, so presumably we're gonna have to type this whole thing again. QEMU system i386 dash net dev user user id equals my net zero. Just copy this off of device. Now, one of the things we can try doing is get getting rid of some of these devices because now there is a there is a like a note here on the wiki that says. Uh, if Windows 95 crashes on you, consider it normal. It was unfortunately never very stable. Now, presumably, you know, <laughs> like I re like, I think it's safe to assume that Windows 95 is not that unstable because, you know, I assume people actually <laughs> did stuff with their computer. Uh, but one of the things we can try doing to make it a little bit happier with, oh, which by the way is why I said. Don't get so excited that we're in the setup, because the setup's only kind of Windows 95. It's not really Windows 95. All right, Windows 95, uh, dash sound, hardware. Yeah, so anyway, what was I saying? Uh, one of the things you can do is, uh, is remove, because like there's tons of devices here, right? There's like the, the network card, the sound blaster, PC speaker. We can, we can try removing some of those things and seeing if that the other thing is Windows 95 isn't so happy with fast CPUs. Now, you know, we're not emulating a... I mean, 
primarily in a Pentium, and I, I'm not entirely sure what the speed of the emulation is here, like in kind of megahertz, but, you know, it's entirely possible this simulator is too fast, uh, even though we're on a Raspberry Pi. So let's see. And now the sound hardware. DC speaker. And, oh, you know what we did forget? We forgot the... We forgot the the SDL. Oh, can I remember off the top of my head, or do I have to Google this? Let's bring it all the way back here. It's gonna be SDL underscore video driver. Is that what it was? Equals FB con. Was it close? Close. Yes. No. Ah, yes. All right. Cool. Back to the starting Windows ninety five. Okay, so it wants us to do safe. Oh dear God. Windows has detected a registry configuration error. Okay, um, have we corrupted it already? Let's boot, I guess. <laughs> oh, no, you know what we, uh, keyboard layout. Forgot the keyboard layout, so, okay, we'll let this boot, I guess. Maybe the mouse will work, but, uh, alright, that's gonna do its thing. Yeah, you know, I'll let this boot. I don't even know what we mode we booted into. I, it's probably safe mode. Oh god, how do I? Okay, at least I know down arrow is. Uh, oh crap! Escape. No. Oh, okay. I'm. <laughs> we. The, which is something here should be an ender. Oh, okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna exit out of this, and then we'll. We'll put it with the, the keyboard layout. All right, we're back. Now we can actually go up and down. We'll try normal boot, and we'll see if we can exit, run scan disk. I don't know, maybe we actually should let it run scan disk. That actually might work. All right, you know what? We'll let it run scan disk. I'll go through and do fix it or whatever for all the things. Yeah, fix it, uh, skip undo. And I'll let it go through all the things. Well, I'll come back once that's done. So, that was a lot of corrupted files. Uh, like, well, I don't know, maybe 20 or something. Like, it was uh, 10, 15, something. Quite a few. They did seem somewhat related to the Internet Explorer, though. Because, you know, there was stuff like cookies and downloads. So what I'm thinking is that maybe the Internet Explorer setup is what's actually crashing us, and every time we boot, it's just trying to start the setup again. Uh, but something particularly worrying is that's a lot of bytes of data that might be lost files, but I, I doubt, because that's, that's a lot of us. <laughs> uh, but it's probably just taking up space, so I think we'll just tell Alaska to just delete. There's one with L. L for delete. Alright. It fixed it, but uh, we'll see if there's any more errors. Well, in today's episode of Corrupted Windows 90... Okay. Uh. Huh. Well, I was going to say that was a very interesting message, but we just exited. Um. <laughs> Did that just crash QEMU? What is happening? Okay. There's something really wrong with this... Windows 95 install. You know what? Let's try safe mode. Because, like, something tells me we're going to need all the help we need, we can get. But we can take this time to admire this amazing startup screen. Which may or may not be the last thing. Oh, my God. <laughs> and look at that. VMM32. Missing or unable to load. So, I think... Okay, so I think you're shutting down. Yeah, we, um, we totally screwed that, uh, that install. Wow, that sucks. Huh. Well, yeah, there's no, really nothing else we can do. I mean, that, presumably VMM32, that sounds important. Can we at least go to a command prompt? Okay, well, we can, we can observe, uh, uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect in here. Oh, it froze. All right, so I think... I think with that, it, it's probably time we, uh, <laughs> I think this is, this is going to need a part two. We're not done. This Raspberry Pi will run Windows 95, but 
it's been too long. I think we need, yeah. <laughs> I'll, um, you know what? I think next time what we should do, we're either going to go, we either go Windows 98, which could either be better or worse. I don't know. Uh, or if it really was something like, the thing is, I don't know if it was the Internet Explorer setup that, like, just messed us up. Because we were crashing. We can try an older version. Oh, okay. It, <laughs> it came back. Uh, or we can try an older version of, because this is, like, kind of the latest, 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 like, OEM-only, you know, slipstreamed, like, USB drivers and everything version of Windows 95. What well, you don't really need, like, I don't think we're, we're not going to be using USB here, I don't think. Uh, I don't know how we're going to transfer file, files, but we'll figure it out. Uh, but we might try, like, RTM, TM, or, like, OSR2 or something. Uh, but on that note, hopefully you at least enjoyed this little adventure with the... Take it here, uh, Raspberry Pi. And, and the great fan, and uh, DOS and Windows 95. If I get around to it, there will be a part two, so... Uh, something, something, subscribe button, like it if you liked it, you know, whatever. Notification bell if you really care. <laughs> See you guys in the next video.